All right. And now the thing that you guys are probably most interested in is how to customize the look and feel of Laka. And they've got a ton of uh, pre-installed themes on here <clears throat> uh, to make, really customize it and make it look like your own. All you have to do is go to the menu section here. So go to the settings, go to menu, and then basically, so we've got dynamic, background, we've got background. Background puts a static image in the background and it just stays that way permanently. You have an image back there, cool. Um, dynamic background means every time you go from like Sega to Super Nintendo to PlayStation, you're going to have a different wallpaper that'll appear in the background there. So uh, for Sega, you might have a picture of a Sega Genesis. For Super Nintendo, you'll have a picture of a Super Nintendo, whatever you want to do. Um, then you can change the opacity of the background, which is how clear it is, how translucent. So if you have that image, you can still have other things show up in front of it, like menu um, animations and things like that. Menu act activated, you want that always on. Um, just always have that on, basically. Uh, mouse support, you can add a mouse if you have uh, a computer. I don't think it works with Raspberry Pi, never tried it, no reason to really. Touch support, pretty much useless unless you have a, um, a touch screen attached to your unit. Uh, menu linear filter, it's kind of cool. Uh, it does seem to make things look just a tiny bit smoother. I leave it off because it seems pointless. It comes on by default, but it doesn't sharpen the menu enough to justify a performance loss, especially when you're running a Raspberry Pi. So I would leave that option off. Navigation wraparound means as you're going left and right through the menu and you go through all your consoles and you get to the last console, if you keep going, it loops back around. That's what that means. Uh, I would leave alpha and scale alone. It changes the size of text and how translucent it is. Uh, menu font, um, there isn't any extra fonts in here, <clears throat> um, but on menu font, if you install your own fonts, you can actually change the way it looks. Be careful not to break your system on accident installing your own font. Uh, it can make things look a little strange if you're not careful. Uh, menu icon theme, this is uh, probably one of you guys' favorites. Monochrome is what I suggest. I've looked at every single one of them. Monochrome seems to be the coolest. Uh, the second coolest looking one, in my opinion, is, uh, shoot, I think it's retroactive. Yeah, so here's the icons for retroactive. So they, they look pretty cool. Um, you know, it actually gives you a colored Game Boy instead of just a white Game Boy. And, uh, you know, this actually looks like the original Game Boy, and that actually looks, so that's pretty cool because it adds color to the icons. Some of you guys will really want that. Uh, I preferred kind of like a scaled down, more minimalist one. Uh, but this is very cool looking. So uh, changing the icons is done by going to your menu and going down to menu icon theme. When you change that, it doesn't necessarily change the backgrounds. It does change the way every icon looks and uh, how, how the text works on the system. So there are some on here that don't really work very well with... Um, a Raspberry Pi, here's Pixel. If you like the pixelated, kind of retro-y vibe, you can change it uh, to look more like a 8-bit system, you know? You got these 8-bit keyboards. It, it purposefully looks low resolution in 8-bit, um, including on the cartridges. So it's a neat little look if you're into that. Uh, here's a black icon, gotta love those. That means that the person who designed the theme just simply didn't make an icon for that particular option. Netplay was added to Laka relatively recently and they did not update this particular uh, menu theme, so that kind of sucks. So we're gonna go back to the menu, we're gonna go down to icon theme. I'm gonna change it back to monochrome. There is a ton of options on here, guys. I'm, I'm not gonna go through them all. Um, but you can really customize the hell out of it. But I, I leave mine on monochrome. Do not enable icon shadows. It's not worth the performance loss on uh, Raspberry Pi. It, it looks kind of silly too. I mean, it depends on your background and your font set and your icon theme. You can at, turn this on if you're on a PC or a more advanced system that runs faster and maybe it'll look cool, but on a Raspberry Pi, do not do it. 
menu shader pipeline. This is the coolest freaking feature that they've added to Laka. It, it makes it look like an actual authentic system. And this is one you're gonna wanna turn on almost guaranteed. And that's why it just looks really, really cool. Um, once you have it on ribbon simplified, you can go down here and you can change the colors. Purple, midnight blue, golden, electric blue, apple green, undersea, volcanic red. I usually leave mine on either midnight blue. I think that looks cool. Uh, electric blue is pretty cool. They all look pretty neat, actually. Probably going to leave this one on undersea. And if you go to the right on menu shader pipeline, it takes you to full ribbon, right? And it's hard to tell, but it does have just a tiny performance loss. So I usually leave it on simplified. The only difference is it looks sharper in ribbon mode and it's less sharp and simplified. On a Raspberry Pi, you want to do as many things as possible to optimize it. So putting it on simplified is already losing power. Technically, if you want to get the most out of your system, you want to just leave everything off. But it's kind of ugly, and I think it's worth a tiny performance loss to have this really cool menu feature. So I suggest leaving it on ribbon. If you keep going to the right, you can turn it on to a mode for called Snow, which is pretty cool if you have a PC or a faster machine. On uh, a Raspberry Pi, though, it's way too slow. So I would be careful even going over to the right, because um, you can't tell right now, but I can't move up and down on the menu without messing something up. So there's your different options. I would keep it on Ribbon Simplified if you're running Raspberry Pi. Uh, display settings, keep this on for sure. You won't be able to change any of the options on your machine if this is turned off, and uh, you'll be wondering where your options went. So leave that on. Display image, um, this is how you um, view your images that you have stored on a USB drive or on a SD card. So turn this on if you have images on your card that you want to look at. Turn it off if not. Same thing with music. If you have music on there you want to play, Laka does support playing music. Turn it on if you've got music. Off if not. Same thing with video. Uh, I don't know off the top of my head what all the supported video is. I would be far-fetched to think Laka included support for things like MKV um, and you know like 200 and uh, what is it 265 or whatever the newest uh, codec is H265 or something like that. Um, probably not gonna have support for it. Um, but real basic files like .avi, .wmv probably has support for that. Um, Netplay I'm gonna turn this one off because I never use Netplay. You guys might. It's a really, really cool feature because it allows you to play with your friends online or through a local area network with multiple machines. And these things aren't too expensive, so you can get a couple TVs together and you guys can play like two two people on one TV, two people on another and have some really cool four player co-op going on. Or you can um, just have two TVs to yourselves and do some cool co-op or fight each other and fighting games. Lots of options with Netplay. Uh, it's really cool because those systems never had that option in the past. You could never uh, hook up a Super Nintendo with another Super Nintendo and then go play Contra with your friend on two TVs or across the country, uh, no less. Uh, display history, um, that gives you a little tab that shows you all the last games you played. Uh, import content. This is really important because this is how you scan your directories and get the games to show up on Laka. Uh, display start screen. That just displays the little Laka logo whenever you start it. Um, it's you know kind of irrelevant. Um, box arts. This is uh, pretty neat. Thumbnails. It changes how they look. So I'll give you an example. So screenshots. Your thumbnails are going to actually show you screenshots of in the game. So very cool that people went through the time and effort to add these to the system. Um, and then you can change it to box art, which is my personal favorite, or title screens. Uh, it'll also show you the title screens. So we can go to our favorite N64 games over here. And, oh, there's the GoldenEye title screen. You know, all these different games. So very, very cool. Uh, I think that's one of the coolest features built into Laka is the ability to just simply download these. Um, if you don't know how, you just go to, it's really easy, you go to online updater, thumbnails updater, you download thumbnails for each console. Super, super simple. Uh, so basically we're going to go back to the menu here, we're going to turn it on box art mode because that's my personal preference. I like to see what the game box looks like. Um, so display time and date, as you can tell that makes my time and date 
disappear or appear. Display battery level, that's pointless on a TV, but if you have a portable system, it will show you how much the battery is charged. And display core name confuses a lot of people, it's down here in the bottom left. If you're an advanced user and you understand what different emulators do, you can actually see what emulator is running your, your game. And some emulators will run games better than others, and Laka supports many, 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 many different emulators. There's uh, multiple emulators for N64, for PlayStation, for Game Boy Advance, and let's say your game doesn't work with one, it will probably work with another. So, now that we've went through all the customization options, uh, I'm just going to look at some other things here. I'm going to go through it real quick. So, threaded tasks, obviously keep this on unless you have like the oldest computer in the world that doesn't have uh, multi-threading. That's basically using more than one um, task per CPU core. If you don't understand it, just leave it on. Keep that on and uh, on a Windows computer you might want to leave this on. You might want to turn it on. It just depends. It'll change the way your desktop looks on a Windows computer. Um, if you're not running Windows though, it won't do anything at all. So leave that off if you're on a Raspberry Pi. Achievements, I'm not going to get too into it. Um, it didn't really uh, work in my testing, but uh, you can basically sync up with an achievement server that's online and uh, you can enter in a username and password and it will basically give you these achievements that the community has made and when you're playing your games you can actually get achievements for it. It's really cool but you'll probably have to do some research to get it working because uh, personally it did not even work for me and I was probably just not giving it enough time and effort. Wi-Fi, pretty obvious. Network, pretty obvious. Services, uh, which I showed you in the last tutorial, but SSH is how you do real advanced tasks uh, from a computer or transferring files to a Raspberry Pi or whatever system you're using for Laka. Samba you want to have on because that allows you to transfer ROMs and things like that over a network. Bluetooth enables what you're going to want to turn on if you're using a uh, like an Xbox One controller or a PlayStation uh, 3 controller, something that has Bluetooth. Or Actually, I don't think PlayStation 3 has Bluetooth. I'm not sure. Xbox One controllers for sure have it, and uh, the NVIDIA Shield controller, for God's sake, will work with these systems. That is freaking awesome. So you can go out and buy an NVIDIA Shield controller, and you can play all your games wirelessly, even on a Raspberry Pi. So that's pretty impressive stuff. Playlists. It's really, if you want to go in here and you want to mess with it, feel free. I wouldn't mess with this. This is how um, Laka knows what games you have and how how it arranges them and things like that. You might want to change the history list size. Um, I changed mine down to 30. It was like 100 or something crazy, I think, to begin with. Um, I don't need to see the last 100 games I played. Uh, you might want that. You might not even want a history list. You can turn that off there. I would leave this on, personally, in case you delete a game, the game will actually still show up on Laka, just so you guys know. If you delete a game by connecting to your network and then deleting the game off Laka, it will still be in the Laka playlist. And so Laka will think it's still there, and then when you try to play it, it'll just give you a black screen or something. So if you want to remove it, you actually have to manually go to your uh, game, click on it, and hit remove. That's good. I know that sucks, but uh, that's the way it is. You, if you want to do it quicker, you have to delete the whole playlist by going to the playlist folder on Laka and just deleting the whole playlist and then rebuilding it by going to scan directory and rescanning all the ROMs. And that, that's a way to, to make sure you only have the ones that are actually on there. And that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, on user, you can change your username. I think that changes how it shows up on your computer, to be honest. I'm not sure. There's the retro achievement thing. you got to sign up for that online. may or may not work for you. Uh, username, I think it's just the default Laka, but you can change it to whatever you want here. Um, I'm not going to change it at all. And then the language. There's a ton of languages supported on this. So I probably should have mentioned this first for some users, especially my Spanish friends. Um, it supports Spanish, French, Japanese, D uh, Dutch, Italian, languages I don't even, not even familiar with. I, this is Korean, I believe, Chinese, ooh, probably Mandarin or something. So yeah, totally, totally a lot of languages on here. So this system works um, for practically anybody in any country. But yeah. This tutorial probably won't be useful for people in another country because it's in English. 
Um, directory, you can change directory. Privacy does not have any options yet. Uh, they're going to add that in the future. And then the last little thing to remember, online updater. This is super, super simple. I shouldn't even have to explain it, but you basically go to online updater. You can update Laka, right? If you have the newest build, one of the RC builds, then you can download the newest one on there as well. Um, thumbnails, you can download thumbnails. Content, this is like homebrew. Um, Netplay, self-explanatory. That's your wireless gaming that I told you about earlier. Uh, information that uh, just gives you more options that you probably won't even use. Configuration, this is important because you want to save current configuration anytime you finish doing any of these changes in your menu because you don't want them to just be uh, undone whenever you reboot. And then whenever you finish something, reboot. So, that was a very long tutorial, 16 minutes. Hopefully you guys got a lot out of it. Oh, actually probably more than 16 minutes. Hopefully you guys got a lot out of it. Once again, my name is Jordan from www.retrogame.club. Uh, if you found this tutorial helpful, please share it. And please, if you have any feedback or you want to contribute, you can uh, give me your tutorials on the the website as well. You can go on www.retrogame.club and you can put your own tutorials out there so people can uh, get your experience and see what you're, uh, what you bring. Sorry, my cats are literally like fighting. They're like battling right now. Got a cat battle going on. He's hiding up on the, <laughs> he's hiding up on the shelf there from mama cat. And then we got baby cat. They were keeping me company throughout this video. <clears throat> so anyway, hopefully you guys got a lot out of this. And like I said, if you got some cool top 10 lists, you want to give your opinions on what are the best games per genre, uh, you want to get help with tutorials, or you want to see more tutorials like this, www.retrogame.club. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later.